What's up guys and welcome back to our van build series. So this week we are tackling plumbing. So let me just go to the back and I'll show you what we've been working on. Hopefully the audio quality isn't too bad. It's really windy today. So right here we have the sure flow strainer, the water pump, and then to our accumulator. And all of this is also using the silencer kit also from SureFlow. So this is what this is right here. And that just makes the pump much quieter. So it's not super noisy since we're going to be working right there and sleeping right up here. Pump's not on all the time. Um, it turns off and on as you use the water. This is the QUS water level sensor. Uh, I believe that's what it's called. And it's going all the way up and the water gauge we installed up in the front, um, just so we could easily see how much water we have. I'm going to insert this uh, water meter into the tank. And it just so it tells us the water level it'll be connected to a little gauge on the inside somewhere and I'm gonna just use this cutout right here this is threaded but so we won't use the thread because there's no threads on this but I think we can just screw it down right here so I'll just cut that out I'm just gonna make these wires longer so I have some extra wire here that I'll use this is an extra one 10 gauge. Oh, okay, this one I'm going to use for the hot water heater, I think. Hold on, let me check what size this is. 12 gauge. All right, 12 gauge. I have a 12, I have a 10, and I have a 12 again. Oh, this is a 10 also. Initially, this was going to be my water pump because I labeled it water pump but our water pump is actually in the back. So this one's gonna be changed and it's gonna be just our um, our meter, our water meter. I'll have to, I've been noting, I've been noting all the changes so I don't get, um, I'll get, I don't get the DC panel all confused and mixed up. So I'm gonna label it, I'm gonna note it right now so I don't mess up later on. Um, I put DC, 12 volt DC panel, and just which labels are going to what actual thing. All right, let's not get confused here. This is the power, and where's my, and this, this is coming from the actual water sensor. All right, so I'm gonna cut this to the appropriate length as well. This is what comes with um, the sensor which is right here so the black from here is going to go to the black from the sensor okay those two will go together and put that in ignore this color it's kind of confusing with the red but just ignore that color this is just coming from the sensor two wires coming from the sensor one is uh, for the black for this and the other is for the ground so this one is going to be our ground from the sensor so, so is the black, or so, I'm sorry, so is the blue on this. This is also ground. So these go together, and so they need to go to the ground, which is from the power source, is the black one. So, these three connected together. I know they're all different colors, but don't worry, it's, it's just all ground right there. And then the red from here is going to go to the positive from our battery. And that's it, and it should be powered after all that's connected. All right, so I'm gonna do that real quick. These have um, backlights too. It comes with these yellow and orange cables. These are for the backlight. So if you want um, a backlight for it, you just connect it together, um, connect it together with the positive. Yeah, we don't really need to check um, the gauge when it's dark. You know, we're gonna have lights in here. We'll be able to see. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep the backlight off. In that case, you just you just leave them. You can probably just cut it off, which is probably what I'll do. Now we just click this in, and we should uh, we should have a a read. So I'm gonna go. Um, so I'll, let me turn the power on for the van, and then um, I'm gonna move the gauge thing up and down. You tell me if this thing moves. Oh, it moves. It, oh, it's half. It's full. It's full. Ooh, very nice. 
Hi, it works. From the pump, it's gonna go back into the silencer tubing. And right here we have our Shark Bite half inch PEX to half inch MPT adapter, which brings it down to our Shark Bite half inch PEX tubing, which goes into the T. And then that's gonna separate it to our outdoor shower, which doesn't use any heat. And this is just gonna be if we need to wash off, if we went diving. Okay, we're gonna test this for the first time. But right now we just have uh, the back, the connection to, to the front is cut off. So that's a cut off valve. So we're just, we're just testing out the back shower. This is a RV water filter. So that's what we're using first. And it's gonna go into there, which goes into the tank. All right, let's test it out. Go slow. It's a little leak right here. Mm. Little drip. I didn't tighten that very well. So there's a little drip already. This is the part that was leaking. Uh, I'm going to use this with it. Pipe thick compound paste. I uh, found that the paste stuff is better than the tape for plastic and PVC, that type of stuff. So. Good water pressure. Yeah. There you go. Definitely could easily wash off and shower. That's awesome. <laughs> we got water. Yay. We got water in the back. And then the rest will go this way up to the front of the van and that will lead to our sink and our shower. And it will also go to our water heater, which will heat our water for the shower and sink. And we used all the blue ones for all cold water. Uh, we have a little bit of red one up in the front where our water heater is. We're using a mix of these shark bite connectors. It has the two ones, the T ones, and the elbow ones in here. And you can see that right here. This one's a T. This one's a little more expensive. It's the push to connect, which we used up in front. I'll go ahead and show you that. Um, so these ones are not push to connect. Still super easy to connect. It's just um, if you ever need to disconnect it, you're going to need to cut these off. And we also installed these barbell valves. They are also the Shark by half inch PEX. And this is just so in case we need to work on the tubing, um, like if we have a leak somewhere, we'll want to turn this off and then turn it back on later. We just have a fill port right here. I think this was probably the hardest thing to deal with because this tubing was hard to find, to find something that connects into here. And we just realized it is leaking between these. So we're not really sure how to fix this yet. Um, if you have any ideas, leave the comments down below not too big of an issue just because it's only leaking when we're filling. So this is just in case we need to drain our tank for any reason we'll just be attaching a hose and it'll just go pour right out. We also have an on and off switch right over there for our water pump just in case. Um, I don't think we'll really need it much but just in case we ever need to turn it on and off without turning our entire power off. And lastly on this one we have our pressure release which goes all the way up and up to here and one of the reasons we did put this up high enough is just so that in case we're ever going uphill or anything water is not going to splash back up that one we're using a half inch npt to a 3 8 hose barb adapter um, and that puts it to our clear vinyl tubing which is a 3 8 vinyl tubing this is our sink drain we haven't drilled a hole yet but it should be here and our shower our shower pan will connect to that one underneath down to our gray water tank. This is our water heater. We went with the Duetto MK2. We went with this one because it can be powered uh, DC. So it has the option 240 uh, AC or 12 volt DC. So that's why we wanted this one because we can do 12 volt DC and uh, it's, so it's much more efficient that way. Right now it's drawing only 1.6 amps, 22 watts. And I'm at 95% charged right now. When it's not actually heating up the water, it just, it's just there. It's not using much power at all. Uh, but if I put this up here, this is the temperature control right here. So if I put it up to like 50 degrees Celsius, that's going to take a lot. Of, it's going to draw a lot of power now. See that it just changed to 26 amps, 26.5. So it's drawing about 350 watts right now. And it, it does heat up slowly, you know, it takes about 40 to 50 minutes to get hot, but that's all right. No big, no, 
no big deal. It's got about, uh, I think, seven liters uh, of water in here. So anytime you want, you can use seven liters of water as long as it's heated up already. Our water heater came with this. This one's for our air pressure release. And we needed this to bend this way just so that it won't hit when the wall is here, as you can see. So that's why we did the elbow. And this is where we use the push to connect, just because every time there was a water leak, it was kind of just a pain to try and fix it. Ooh, I just saw something drip. Was that from here or there? Oh, I'm not sure. I saw it too. Yeah, so as you guys can see, it's a constant fix of the leaks. <laughs> yeah, the leaks are a pain in the ass. Yeah, setting everything up was pretty easy. Understanding plumbing was pretty easy. It's just trying to fix the leaks. I think there's like the tiniest of leaks. Like, see, my hand's pretty dry. And it's still dry. But maybe if we wait like five minutes, it'll kind of mm. come out. But this one, yeah, this one's not leaking now. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should, th this one we put tape and the paste. These are, these are only paste because it, it looked like it worked just with the paste. But we might just take it off and just put tape and paste on all of them. Tape and paste on this one too. This one's only tape. So I think we'll take this one off definitely and put some paste on it. Get both the pipe plate compound paste and the Teflon tape. Both of them. This heavy thing that you see dangling up here is basically how the sink retracts. <laughs> And we had to get one where we can unscrew it. So it'll unscrew there. We will attach our shower to this, which will let us shower right over there. Yeah, we'll hose it over here. And then we'll have the shower head right there. This sink here is 13 inches by 11 inches. And the depth, when you're buying a faucet for the sink, you have to make sure that the sink, this faucet is small enough because initially we bought one that was a little bit bigger than this and it was angling out like this so it would have shot out like right here even with this smaller faucet like, you know, the angle of the head you know almost shoots it out but this one works pretty well um, but yeah so be be conscious of that well, we'll, leave, we'll leave these ones in the description below so you know which ones to get well, both both the uh, sink and the faucet underneath the van I'm gonna have to drill a hole somewhere for the shower and the sink and I was looking at where the placement of my um, the hole for my shower and the drain is right around here but I think I'll just have to drill a small hole first just to find out Oh, there it is. That is in the clear right there. That's perfect. I got four inches on this side and a ton of clearance all around. Yes. So I just got my drain for the shower. And so this comes with several parts, the actual drain itself. And then it comes with the rubber gasket, a paper one as well. That's so the rubber doesn't wear, I guess. And then uh, this ring, so those, go on first so those basically go on there like that and you screw that guy on and we also have this one and then you screw this one on but i also bought this which is um, an extra piece i bought separately you can put this through like that and then you can screw that to the bottom and that extends the bottom of the uh of the drain let me just put that together i also have some plumber's putty i'm gonna put that around the seal to make sure there's a watertight seal there and i've never used it but i'm assuming i just put it around around here building a van is cool it's like building a little home you you learn everything that would go in a home you know there's a lot of uh learning that goes behind it so it's a really good life experience i think you know later on down the line all these all these things that i'm learning are definitely going to help me out when i have a house so apparently you're supposed to need it before you use it so i'm going to do that first and then just do it again 
but when I put this plastic gasket on here, it's much harder to put it in. And it kind of pops off. There it is. Looks good to me. And that will go to a gray water tank down here. It's not gonna just drain out into the street. We'll have a gray water tank that we're gonna mount somewhere around here. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or if any professional plumbers have any suggestions, leave a comment down below. Um, we'll catch you guys next week.